Hey guys, Mike here again, and today we're going to talk a little bit about rendering best practices as we kind of start out uh, on our first projects. Um, rendering can very easily become the most time intensive part of your project, uh, especially when taking into account the fact that uh, once we get into materials and lighting, we really have to render out our scene in order to see what we're doing uh, for the most part. So a quick fact for you just to kind of tell you exactly how important uh, saving time on rendering is. If we were to take the Pixar's Cars 2 movie for example um, and let's just say that they're rendering at 24 frames per second um, each individual frame they had a server or a render farm consisting of about 12 1,500 CPU cores, uh, and the estimate was they were spending 11.5 hours rendering each individual frame. Now, obviously, we may not be working on that large of a project, but uh, if we start spending 10, 20 seconds each time we need to see one of our changes, that is way too long of a time, uh, and we're going to end up spending minutes, if not hours, each day waiting for those pixels to resolve. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, let's get started here. Uh, I just have a quick, small little interior scene, it's just a little kid's room, uh, and I've already rendered out uh, an initial render. Now the first thing we need to understand is that we do have access to see how long our rendering times take. Um, anytime, whatever kind of render we do, it is recorded, and if we look down on the bottom left corner of our 3ds max it's going to tell us how long it took to render that frame so this view here this low quality what we call draft render uh, took me 16 seconds now let's say for example that I was making a change to this chair the material the lighting whatever it is uh, if I wait 16 seconds every time I make a change to that chair, then every four changes I'm wasting a minute of my time. If we can cut that down into, say, two, maybe even four seconds of render time, then we've made a significant change in how much time we have to work on our scene versus how much time we are sitting in our chair waiting for those pixels to resolve. Now, the first thing to understand is uh, as we are making changes to our scene, we're not going to be rendering in final render quality. We're going to be rendering in draft quality or maybe just a little bit above draft quality. Uh, so it's going to look grainy, it's going to look noisy like this does, uh, a little bit pixelated. That's fine. It, initially it's a little hard to get used to, but as you render more and more and more and you do more projects, you start to understand exactly what those renders are telling you uh, perhaps you know just the general mood of the lighting the the materials that you're working on you'll be able to discern those through this noise and grain so um, we are working in mental ray right now because uh, we are going for the photorealism um, so obviously time is of the essence. Mental Ray doesn't really like to go very fast. There's a lot of calculations involved. And even on a very powerful machine like my own, this is still taking way too long. If I were to up this to final render quality and turn this up to say uh, 720p resolution, which is 1280 by 720, um, this could easily take me two, three hours to render just kind of depends on what the settings are and when what's all involved. Now if I turn the lights, the interior lights on in the scene, this render time easily doubles. So we have to take into account the materials in play, how many light sources we have. It's obviously in our best interest to, to decrease the amount of light sources we have in Mental Ray um, just for time's sake. So what are some tips that we can do uh, or some tips we can use and things we can do in order to bring that time down. So there's a few things. One is to keep our image precision and our final gather precision very low. Um, if we can get away with using draft on both, great. Um, if not and you have a powerful machine, then every once in a while we'll tick the image precision up to low and a lot of times we can use leave just leave final gather 
precision on draft. If not, then we can kick it up to low, but that's really going to hurt us. Just remember that every time we increase a render setting, we are exponentially increasing our render time. Okay. And then with final gather bounces, just so the light can bounce around the room at least a couple of times, we'll, we'll leave the final gather bounces at two. For final render quality, uh, a lot of people up that anywhere between four and seven. Again, you're exponentially increasing your render time, but your image is going to look that much better. Um, a lot of people are curious as to see what it's going to look like with final render settings. I would say just work on each individual piece of your scene. Uh, and get them kind of perfected and then when you're ready you just increase to the final render quality and a lot of times within one or two shots you've got it so that in mind um, initially when I start working uh, I will do kind of this one-off full render just to kind of see where I'm at that's my starting point from that point on we're gonna work a section at a time so for example if I needed to just work on this chair if I need to work on the material or the lighting of the chair, then I'm probably going to just switch the area to render drop down to region. And I'm going to move this region around depending on which part of the scene I'm working on. Uh, even if that means that region takes up half of the image, that's okay because now I'm still rendering less than what the entire scene consists of and this is only going to take me what seven eight seconds yeah we see down there that took seven seconds versus sixteen may not sound like a lot but that time will snowball up into minutes hours days depending on the project so again the emphasis is on working very uh, in very confined pieces so that we can keep that render time down and keep our progress moving forward. So for example, if I'm working on this chair, if we go back to th that scenario, um, this render has taken me all of three seconds. I make a change, I hit render, yeah, I'm just burning three seconds instead of seven or sixteen or thirty seconds at a time and I can see my changes relatively quickly. Um, now if we're talking about materials, uh, a lot of times we can get our materials done inside the material editor and if they look really good inside of the material editor so for example if this mattress is just doing what I need it to do or a rug or a chair here this is our chair if these materials are looking really good then 90 percent of the time it's just a matter of tweaking a few dials here and there once we add the lights so in order to keep our render times down, first thing we need to do is perfect our materials. Get them at the way we need them uh, and don't worry about the scene. Just worry about them inside the material editor. Uh, once we add the lights, then we're going to want to work with uh, each section of the scene where that light affects. So for example, um, let's go actually down here to the bottom. These lights down here that are off right now these are solely affecting sort of the bottom half of the scene uh, and so I would most likely just be rendering out this portion to make sure that those lights are doing their job very well and then I'd move on. Um, so the idea here is to decrease the size of the renders as much as possible so if we're working on the stack of books, we're not going to render all of this. There's really no reason for it. If all we're doing is working on this bottom stack, then we could easily decrease that region and we can just render those books. Okay, And the smaller we can get that, the more confined that we can work the quicker we're going to be at making changes and and rendering out uh, what we need to very quickly. And we can hit this all day and it's really not going to spend too much time. See we're down to two seconds on this one. Uh, in addition to that we can crop. So in case you get bothered by the rest of the scene while you're working on a particular area, um, we can just crop our region. 
And so it's only going to take the region that we want and we can work specifically on that. So we kind of work in uh, kind of the, the keyhole or the tunnel vision mentality here. Um, or we can do something different. Blow up is going to allow us to get a little bit more detail, um, but it's going to take the in, uh, entire resolution. So this one's probably going to take me close to 15, 16 seconds like the original one did, maybe a little quicker. But see, now I'm getting close up. I can see a little bit more detail, which helps me to not have to use other trickery to to see what's going on at the at the very fine detail level. That one actually took me 18 seconds. So just keep that in mind. I just wasted 18 seconds of everyone's time that's ever watched this tutorial. So if you multiply those numbers together, you can find out exactly how much time uh, is actually wasted while we're waiting for things to render. Um, aside from that, we do have the full view, but again, use that as sparingly as possible. We're really looking to use our region renders in order to keep those render times down. Uh, the same kind of applies with uh, the default scanline renderer. Obviously, the more things you have going on in your scene, the longer those render times are going to take. Lights are the biggest uh, expense when it comes to renders. So make sure you have those fine-tuned. Uh, and aside from that, uh, not many other suggestions that I can offer right now. If you have any questions, obviously ask them down in the comments. I'll get to them as quickly as possible. Uh, but until then, uh, have fun in 3D. Keep those render times down. And just be productive. See you guys next time.